The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome to worship with the folks at the Presbyterian Church of Danville, Kentucky. My name is Caroline Kelly and I am the pastor here. And I wanna welcome you wherever you are this morning to be with us as we gather in this new way of being church and doing worship together. This is our second week of, of trying this new way and it's likely that we will be doing this for some time to come. Sometime next week, you'll be hearing from our leadership about the further suspension of worship and other in-person activities at the church. But we will continue to find ways to reach out and engage with you and worship together in the meantime. Today, worship will be led by a variety of voices, including mine. We will offer prayers, a time with young disciples, an introduction about how the scripture relates to World Water Day, which we celebrate on March the 22nd. And then we'll have a prayer, a reading of the scripture, some meditation, silence, intercessory prayer, music, and then a final closing prayer. Recognizing that we are all learning to do things in a whole new way. Let us set aside our worries and our plans for a brief time of worship as we open ourselves to the power of God through prayer. Let us pray. Here we are, O oh God, socially distanced by a nefarious virus, yet communally drawn together by a mysterious thirst for living water for our bodies and our souls. Here we are, O oh God, lifting up our immunocompromised and health-challenged sisters and brothers, praying that we do not, by our carelessness or our insensitivity, contribute a greater threat to their well-being. Here we are, O oh God, gathered in ways we pray are faithful, seeking guidance both through our medical professionals and your spirit and truth. Here we are, O oh God, lifting up our anxiety and dread with open palms, asking you to take it from us so that our palpitations are calmed, our tachycardia steadied. Here we are, O oh God, revealing our deepest grief and loss longing to remain cognizant of your strong but tender hand undergirding us through it all. Here we are, O oh God, offering our whole selves, bodies, minds, and souls to the gathering ways and relationships of your love. Here we are, O oh God, fully prepared to part with all that separates us from you and therefore also separates us from our neighbors. In the name of the one through whom we have been reconciled to God, we make this prayer. Amen. Hi, everyone. This Sunday is World Water Day, so I want to talk to you a little bit about an important mission of our church. Um, it's called Living Waters for the World. <clears throat> But um, first, my throat's kind of scratchy. Let me get a drink of water. Benjamin, can you bring me some water, please? Thank you. Mm. Which one of these do you think I should drink? Should I drink this one? What about this one? This one? I think I'll go with this one. Mm, that's good, that's much better. You know, you and I have a choice whether we want to drink contaminated water or clean water. But there's a lot of kids all around the world who don't have that choice because the only water available to them is this dirty contaminated water. And sometimes it makes them sick. In fact, there's millions of kids around the world today who are sick and may even die because all they have is this dirty contaminated water to drink. So do you think that God would want you guys 
to drink contaminated water? Do you think God wants any child around the world to drink contaminated water? I don't think so. And so there are people in our church that are involved with a mission ministry that's called Living Waters for the World, and they go out into countries all around the world and help families to install systems that makes their water clean so they have nice clean water to drink so that children everywhere, you guys, and like this little girl in Mexico, have clean water to drink that will keep them healthy and so they don't get sick from drinking this dirty water. And so the next time when you have a glass of this good clean water, just remember how many kids around the world are waiting and hoping that they can have clean water to drink sometime. And so Living Waters from our church goes out and does this and we can be very grateful to them and other committees, other Living Waters groups around the world that do this so that other kids can be healthy and other families can have clean, nice drinking water. So let's pray together. Lord, we pray for water with our whole beings, asking to be a part of safe water's availability for all of God's children. Amen. Many years ago, the World Health Organization designated this day, March 22nd, as International World Water Day, a day for us to remember that clean water, which should be a basic human right, is still not available for millions of people around the globe. How appropriate that this year it falls just at a time when we ourselves are experiencing fear of disease and isolation from our communities of support. For many, that fear of disease is a constant, a fact of life. For the water that they must have to sustain their lives may very well threaten their lives. Alleviating that situation is the goal of Living Waters for the World, through which organization you have offered your prayers and your financial support for many years. Today's scripture, the story of the Samaritan woman at the well, reminds us that Jesus knows our need for water. The story tells us that he himself experienced thirst. And he understands the pain of the woman who was isolated from her community, the pain that we are experiencing for a while. And now we turn to God's word as it comes to us in the fourth chapter of John's Gospel. Just as Joni told us, today's scripture reading reminds us of our connection to those around the world who live without clean water and who face the crisis of life threatening disease every day. I don't know about you, but when I'm faced with a crisis or a challenge, I typically try to approach it by getting control of it. I research it, I study it, I work harder and harder, I work longer and longer, I mean, I attack it head on. And that's been the same approach I've used to all the changes forced on us by the coronavirus over these last 10 days or so. And I thought it was working pretty well for me. Suddenly, I hit the wall. Yesterday afternoon, my phone battery went dead right in the middle of um, my trying to respond to an email. And rather than charging my phone, which I would typically do right away, I just put it down. And since I was sitting on the sofa in my home, I stretched out to rest. Two and a half hours later, I woke up. I charged my phone and what do you know? Nothing. I hadn't missed anything. No one was trying to track me down. No one was waiting on my response to their email. No one except John Irwin, who is putting our worship video together, was waiting on anything for me. And my sense of control was just an illusion and it vanished. I imagine that many of you can relate to that feeling. When everything around you feels like it's out of control, it's, it's easy to get caught up in the frenzied pace 
and wear yourself out trying to keep up. Very quickly you realize that your cup is empty. Your well is empty. Today's guided meditation is a good reminder that we have to keep going back to the well, especially in these times. We have to keep going back to the well to restore us, but not just any well. So as I read the scripture for today, I invite you, if you're not already, to assume a relaxed, receptive posture, and then to close your eyes as I read the passage. Try to imagine yourself in the story as I read it, seeing the story unfold in your mind's eye. And then let the words of the text touch you in the depth of your soul, for these words were written for you. Hear now the story from the fourth chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman. Now when Jesus left Judea and started back to Galilee, he had to go through Samaria. He came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us the well and with his sons and his flock drank from it? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of the water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up in eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. Could he be the Messiah? And they left the city and ran to see him. Have you ever felt a deep thirst in your soul? A thirst so great, an ache so profound, that nothing in your experience could satisfy it? Can you name that thirst? What are you thirsting for? The Samaritan woman didn't know what to make of Jesus' offer of living water. How was it possible that it could quench her thirst forever? Do you find it hard to believe the gospel message for the same reasons? Do you need to understand it in order to believe? The Samaritan woman proudly traced the heritage of the well all the way back to her ancestor, Jacob. What traditions get in the way of your recognizing the living gift that Jesus offers you? To accept this living water that Jesus offered the Samaritan woman had to make a giant leap of faith. If we were to meet the living Christ, would we be willing to risk such a leap? 
Are there people you care about enough to run and tell the good news of Jesus and the living water he provides? Who are they? Or are you afraid for your reputation and prefer to drink only from the familiar wells? Have you ever asked Jesus for a drink of the living water? Can you do that now? May the living water flow into your soul and fill you with only the peace that Christ can give, only the strength that Christ can give, only the courage that Christ can give. And then rejoice. Rejoice and go share the good news with others. Come. Come and see the Messiah. And now, as we've been doing during these Sundays in Lent, I invite you to pause for a moment of silent reflection and to give yourself time to continue to ponder how this scripture speaks to you today. And now, as we open our hearts to God in prayer, I invite you to join with me in a response to each of the petitions that I will offer. I will use the words, O Healing River, and you are invited to respond with these words, Pour down your waters and heal your people. So let's try that together one time. O Healing River, pour down your waters and heal your people. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, whose spirit moved over the waters at the dawn of creation, hear our prayers for all who thirst today. We pray for those who are spiritually thirsty, who long to know your presence, but don't know where to find you. We pray for those who are alone and without hope, those who long to feel needed and loved, those who are searching for meaning and purpose. O healing river, pour down your waters and heal your people. We pray for all who are physically thirsty, who don't have enough water to drink or feed their animals whose fields are parched, whose crops have withered, those who have to walk long distances to find enough water to survive, or who have to be content with water that is unclean. We pray for those whose homes and villages are torn apart because of drought or famine. O healing river, pour down your waters and heal your people. We pray for those who are thirsty for justice, who long for an equal sharing of resources among peoples and nations, those who put their lives at risk to protect streams and rivers and oceans, those who are working to find clean water and make it available to those who need it. O healing river, pour down your waters and heal your people. God, we ask that you would open our hearts to the needs of all who thirst. Give us courage to work together for justice, to stand alongside those who are thirsty, so that all people everywhere may live without want or fear and may discover the abundant life you promised to each one. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of living water, we pray. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
from this service of worship to the service of God's people near and far, refreshed by the living water that Jesus offers to you. Listen for the parched voices of the least of these and search out the dry places and the arid souls and become for them a spring of living water. And as you go, may the blessings of the God of life, the Christ of love, and the spirit of grace be upon you now and forevermore. Amen.